everybody. Hmm. Made me all happy. I'm a happy dad. So what I've done is I've, um, just like in the last video, I've gone and cut my mason's line about three feet long. Um, and as you can see here, I've uh, stuck my needle beside the ruler so you can see about roughly how big the needle is that I'm using. Uh, it's, it's just your basic uh, kind of thickish carpet needle. Uh, it's, it's a little bit thinner than some carpet needles. Some carpet needles are really thick. This one's a little bit thinner, which I like. Um, and it seems to be perfect for this this particular uh, application. I, I really like it. It works really well. But you can use basically anything that's uh, kind of thin. You know, you can even use wire folded over on itself or whatever you want to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark your line. Now, the reason I'm doing this video again to show how I'm doing it is because I wanted to... Uh, this is kind of a, as a video response to, um, you know, how would you make this if you wanted to make your loop uh, smaller? So I used uh, three inches, which turned out to be an inch and a half uh, loop. Here you can see. Let me get my Sharpie out of the way. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, you know, this is a pretty good size loop. It's uh, about an inch and a half. So what I had originally done was I had marked at four inches, which this is your berry line, right? And then I had marked at uh, seven inches, which is, uh, you know, so three inches for my loop. In this particular case, I'm going to actually do a much shorter because I just I just need it to go around. This is so I don't have any of those uh, little Dutch uh, new Dutch uh, new newfangled Dutch thingies that he made for uh, his continuous ridge line. I'm going to order some <laughs> very soon because I think they're very very cool. But I didn't want to wait that long in order to make this response so that um, people have asked me questions about how to how to make a smaller loop and I didn't want to wait until my um, little little new Dutch hoo haws came in. So I thought I would go ahead and, and show you how to do it on an s -meaner because an s -meaner is a significantly smaller uh, application than what I'm doing. So, you know, as you, as you can see, so if I wanted to put an s -meaner on here, um, you know, obviously there's an awful lot of wiggle room there. So what we want to do is we want to see, see how to get the loop so it's like really nice and tight around this. So, so how, do you, how do you do that? How do you make, a, you know, the loop smaller? I'm going to show you. I'm not going to need really that much uh, as far as you know the loop goes. So I'm going to go ahead and start and do my original four inches here. And again, this this width right here is is your berry line. This is what you're going to be burying in your line. Okay. Now um, this is so much smaller. So originally, like I said, I had marked out to seven inches for um, to have an inch and a half loop. Because this is so small. I think I'm actually going to get away with probably about a half an inch, even smaller maybe. Maybe... Maybe three-eighths? Nah, I'm going to be safe. I'm going to go a half inch. And we can play with it. And if I need to do it smaller, it'll at least give us some idea where we're at, right? So we got our four inch. This is our berry line. We got half an inch here, so four and a half inches, half an inch. This is your actual loop size. So when we fold this over and get it all set up, this is going to be a very small loop. Okay? It'll turn out to be about a quarter of an inch loop. Which should work pretty well with this. So we've got our needle. What you want to do, so again, this is your berry. This is your standing line out here. What you want to do is find your second mark in from your the end of your berry line. And you want to kind of just kind of push a little bit so you can loosen up the, the weave a little bit. And go ahead and insert your needle through. Okay. And just a reminder, you want to make sure you have uh, even amounts on either side. Okay. So you're, you're basically intersecting exactly half of your line and you're not um, you're not breaking any of the weaves so you've got even uh, you know the strands that come down you're not going through the middle of a strand alright once you got that through and then what you want to do is you want to take your berry line feed it into your needle just like that okay and then you want to go ahead and pull that through 
just like that. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult than the last one that we did because our loop line is going to be so small. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull all the way through until you see that second or that first uh, or sorry second mark there. Okay. Now this is our original four inch mark. This is our berry again. This end running out really super long is our standing line. So you can see I've gone all the way past, but look at how small that loop is, right? Now one of the things that you're going to have to do uh, before before you actually do this, uh, you're going to have to actually insert your your uh, the thing that you're going to be looping, right? So let's go ahead and pull that back out, and I'll show you how to do that because it's uh, it's a little different. But I just wanted to show you that. I mean, that loop is really small, right? So, okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and go through again. Now, uh, I could have, you know, because because this has the, you know, things I could have just looped it in there. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to actually show you because the uh, little Dutch hoo haws uh, they actually don't have a way uh, to easily... Uh, do that. So what you would have to do is you'd have to actually go ahead and put your dilly bobber on there. Okay. And these are highly technical terms. Dilly bobber, hoo ha, whatnot. And we got our little first mark there, you can see it. Okay. I'm actually going to go a little higher than that mark though. Okay, there we go. Again, want to make sure you have equal amounts on either side. Okay. You want to find the end of your standing line. Bring that around and feed it in there. Okay. And then you go ahead and feed that through. And then all you do is just make it nice and tight. And that's what you end up with. And then, just like before in our other video, we're going to bury our line. I'm not going to taper it because this is so thin again just like the last ones but basically uh, if you look at my other video it'll show you how to how to do it but um, just a note to everybody again so go ahead and lay it out like this you want to go well past where your berry is going to be ending so go all the way down to here and start feeding in from there so Just like that. Okay. And feed all the way up. Oops. And the main thing is just to make sure you, your needle stays inside the weave. And it's a little bit tougher because you got this extra weight uh, on the end there, so just kind of got to navigate it all. You want to get as close to where you end there as possible. I'm going to come out right about there. There we go. It's pretty close. Okay, then you go ahead and feed your and make sure you hang on to all this stuff because uh, like I said if you let go it's going to be kind of a pain. And feed that through. Okay. 
And then just start pulling it on through. Get it all the way past. Just like that. Make sure it's all nice and tight. And then go ahead and start milking back down. Just like that. And now you got yourself a nice tight little loop. And that's how you do it. Pretty straightforward. So I hope that this uh, this helps. I hope it uh, explains how to do a much smaller loop and how to get those little doodads on there uh, so that they fit real nice and snug. So uh, my best to you guys. Happy hanging and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys out on the trail. Alright. Thanks a lot. I guess we now return you to your regularly scheduled surfing. Have a good one.